such as Marco Polo and others would travel on trading ships to the Far East and other ports of call. They brought back wine, oil, beans, and other merchandise. These were traded in the thriving marketplace of Venice. Sightseeing is big business in Venice because everything is a sight for wet, eh, sore eyes. For sightseeing, you get a special kind of boat. It's called a gondola. Gondoliers have been pushing gondolas through the canals of Venice for about 900 years. And boy, are their arms tired. Over those years, many of the boats have changed. But about 400 of the classic craft remain. A gondolier is the person who steers the gondola. You can't miss them. They're the ones in the back of the boat saying, Everybody sit down but me. Besides that, many wear black pants, striped shirts, and a beribboned hat. They must all shop at gondoliers or us. Legend has it that gondoliers become gondoliers by being related to other gondoliers. It figures, who else would wear those hats? Being a gondolier is a family business passed down from generation to generation. The gondolier rows this oar, which is mounted on the left side. To compensate for this, the left half of the gondola is longer than the right half. If the boat wasn't built like this, the gondolier could row, row, row his boat all day, but would just go round and round in circles. Where is this gaggle of gondolas going? If they're in Venice, they could only be headed for the Grand Canal. 
canal is the name given to all the waterways that make up the city of Venice. And the Grand Canal is the big one, hence the name. If they named it Pee Wee Canal, it wouldn't sound nearly as great. About one third of the canals of Venice connect to the Grand Canal. It's where Venetians go for a traffic jam. The Grand Canal cuts a huge backwards S to the city of Venice. Most of the important people of Venice built their palaces there, but they like to call them palazzos. There has to be a dry way to cross all these canals other than my gadget copy. That would be the bridges of Venice County. All 400 of them. That's a lot of bridges over bubbled water. And some of these stone bridges date as far back as the 12th century. Bridges in Venice came in all shapes, sizes, and types. There are wooden bridges like the Academia Bridge. There are stone bridges like the Rialto Bridge. And all the bridges are heavily used. Almost all the bridges in Venice have steps going over. Some are so steep that without steps, you'd slide right into the coal canal. Inspector Gadget here, about to uncover the truth behind one of the oldest myths in Venice, that gondoliers have webbed feet under those shoes to help them walk on water. This man is going to remove his shoe and the mystery will be revealed. Here we go. Aha! What do gondoliers have under their shoes? Webbed socks. I rest my case. Let's see what other mysteries we can unshoe, uh, uncover. Here we are in the center of Venice, St. Mark's Square, proving indisputably that the center is in the middle of town. St. Mark's Square has served as the center of city life for about 1,200 years. Thousands of tourists flock here to gaze at the famous landmarks, grab a bite to eat, or even feed a pigeon. And did you know that St. Mark's Square is also the lowest point in all of Venice? Which means that the pigeons get wet feet in high tide. One of the most majestic sights in all of Venice is here in St. Mark's Square, the Campanile or Bell Tower. Waterways, bridges, you can see almost all of Venice from up here. But wait, there's more. Go, go, Gadget Lakes! Venice is more than a world-renowned city of pigeons, people, and palaces. It's a world-class hangout for cats. Venice has an army of cats that lounge around the stairways and courtyards of the palaces. They are part of the flavor of Venice, and I don't mean tuna. Venice is also the site of dozens of little markets and shops with everything from carnival mass to freshly made pasta and pastries. Not that you can eat pasta and pastries through a carnival mass. And there are glass shops, dozens of glass shops. A bull would have a heyday on these streets. Let's investigate. I use my Venetian-made gadget magnifying glass. There's a little island called Murano near the mainland of Venice, and it's just a short hop by, you guessed it, boat. The island of Murano is a cluster of glass blowing factories that have been practicing the art of glass blowing for over 700 years. By now, they've got it down cold. Back in 1500, Murano became the premier glass maker for all of Europe. How do they do it? Very carefully. Glass is formed by melting fine sand into a liquid-like syrup. This hot fluid is gathered up into a gob of molten glass on the end of a hollow tube. A glass shape is formed by blowing into the hollow end of the tube. Glass blowers are taught from an early age to blow out not suck in. 
Different shapes and thicknesses of glass are formed by different pressures of blowing while twirling the tube with tools of the trade. If the glass gets too cool, it's not cool. It has to be reheated on the spot with this blowtorch. Another cool thing about glass blowing is the colors. Color is added by rolling the piece in different colors of sand and plastic. When it's finished, the glass is cut off the tube and cooled. Wowzers! Next time I break a glass, I'm gonna feel terrible. We've cruised the canals, gondoliered in a grand manner, pulled the shoe off a gondolier, and gloried in glass in Murano. It's time to dry ourselves behind the ears and by moose from Venice to our next Inspector Gadget field trip. Du, du, du.